Ah. Oh. Good morning, my precious little storyteller. How satisfying it is to see you in the slight glow of the sunrise. It is a time like no other. No. The sunset and sunrise are two of my favorite times of day. Well, other than the dead of night, of course. Such times are appreciated. Far too little in the world we live in. Far too many of us believe that things can only get done during the hours between the rise and fall of the sun's rays. But I find myself least active at such times. In fact, I have pride in one's self ability to close tasks and tie up loose ends at night's fall or the crack of daylight. You understand, do you not, my sweet? Of course you do, my flighty little chick. There seems to be no hour of the day or night you are not busy with some little project, song, or new fanciful tale. It is exceedingly endearing to hear of all your escapades. I do indeed hope to end up in one of those tales someday. Though I would want to proofread it, of course. Business is still business, my little sprout, no matter how much fun we have. And I cannot have you spouting all our little secrets. Can I? Even with how well you would tell them. And how is my favorite weaver of words doing? Hmm? Tell Miss Nix all about it. <laughs> For a thing that makes their living off talking, you do always tend to go rather quiet whenever we are together. Not that I mind. It is a sign of how comfortable you are around me, is it not, pet? I should hope so, too. I would be positively distraught if my little plaything was not also my best customer. It is so much more gratifying to have you visit me willingly. It makes me feel all warm inside, knowing I do not have to expend a drop of energy to bring you to me is one of the things I like best about you. One of many, sweetie. You know more than anyone how little I enjoy dirtying my hands or tiring myself out. But for you, I would make an exception. Occasionally. So, business is dwindling a little. Is that what has got your tongue this morning, hun? Those driveling fools outside starting to sour on your stories. It's not fair that some lousy, unappreciative pets upset my dolly to the point they do not want to speak to me. But no matter. Where there is a complication, I have a solution. Sit very tight, little lamb. I am certain I can find something on these shelves. No peeking, of course, as always. <laughs> okay, my little singing dandelion. You can open those charming eyes of yours now. Ah, uh, there they are. I never get tired of seeing those. Oh, how I would love to have them for myself. Have a
spot reserved right behind the counter. Pride in place. Do not get in any fights, you hear me, Dove? Anyone who damages those peepers will pay a hefty price. And not a price that can be settled flicking a few gold coins my way either. Such beauty cannot be brought with mere metal. And I will not have their gaze stolen from me either. This pet is sap drawn from the very same reeds used to carve Pan's flute by the man himself after his rather explosive tantrum. Now thanks to that oaf Zeus, of course. With some excuse for a man or god. So arrogant all of the time. Yes, the very same pan, my dearest toy. How did I come across such a thing? Such an inquisitive little moth, fluttering to and fro. Such information will never part my lips, as has been the case for this parlor's numerous exchanges. Though, I should not scold you so much, my love. I do indeed savor that little agape gasp of yours each and every time I emerge from my shelves with a new trinket for you. I will give you this. Because it is you. Let us leave by noting that myself and the nymph that became both the flute and this vial of sap were not the closest of friends. And it is so that in this small crystal vial lies the answer to your dilemma. Much like the times before when you have come to me with an ailment, be it one that required a toadstone to battle away a reckless curse thrown at you by an unruly patron. Something to this day that I cannot truly forgive, though the aftermath of said incident did indeed prove more troublesome for them than they had bargained for. A simple factoid from the Book of Thoth to give the perfect ending to a new epic or even a cute swig from the vaunted need of poetry for when you needed that little confidence boost. This parlor, and I as its mistress, will always seek out new toys to give to my toy, and in return I get to pinch your cheeks a little and have you run errands for me whenever I desire. It is the essential symbiotic relationship, as all true relationships should be. Except instead of giving you flowers every few weeks, I gift you genuine dream catchers and make voodoo dolls of any creature who gives you a lingering glance during my Sunday evenings. And from you, I get blissful obedience. What mistress would not be proud to have cultivated such an existence? It took me a couple million years, after all. Drink no more than two drops of this essence before the start of each lovable ditty, and there will be eyes and ears torn away from their mundane living and drawn to you. And with that, my beloved Jim, your problems vanish yet again. It has become my favorite pastime very quickly to help aid a dumpling like you in which, in whatever ways you need me. It provides me a break from day-to-day -day business, which, by the way, is still going wonderfully thanks to you. Characters near and far cannot seem to get enough of my, I mean our, Ambrosia tarts, and when served with a song by my very own wind-up bard, the atmosphere in the parlor becomes practically 
enticing enough to drink it in, in fact. Ah, oh, the sun is starting to grow stronger, I see. It is insulting that such a gaudy orange ball of gas sees fit to interrupt our time together, pet. But, unfortunately, I have still not found an item that makes it permanently dusk among these shelves. As much as I try. So, it is with regret that we must part again. Such succulent sorrow it is. But we will see each other very soon. I will see sure of that. Sing your little heart out for me, will you please? Terrific. I will be listening, as always. <laughs>